All right, it looks like we're all here. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Good. Okay, so uh, Valis, why don't you why don't you jump in right in here and and uh, get us started? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is another um, announcement and chat that we actually are really looking forward to today. Uh, Schneider, you're going to introduce yourself. I think let's start with you. Do a quick introduction before we get into everything. Okay. Uh, my name is Sam Schneider Larby. I'm one of the senior partner solutions architects here at AWS. I'm in the partner strategic alliance team. I specialize around VMware Cloud on AWS as well as AWS Outpost. So I work with core engineering teams to build these services and add more features to it for benefit of our customers and partners like our listeners today. Great. Uh, Larry, can we just hear from you very quickly who you are? Sure. Uh, I'm Larry Henderson, uh, product manager with VMware, VMware Cloud on AWS and VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. I've had a tenure at VMware uh, coming from professional services, specializing in architecting our NSX product. And I'm here to talk to you guys about VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost and helping any of the listeners getting uh, any more educated around the solution. Great. Well, uh, really appreciate both of you coming. Uh, what, one thing that I am really excited about for this release is we're, we're mixing three amazing pieces of technology together. We're, we're mixing VMware, we're putting in VMware and AWS, and we're putting outposts all together and making this really nice, uh, I don't know what you call it, a, a, a salad, a charcuterie. I'm not sure exactly what's the right word for it, but we've got them all nicely, nicely blended. Um, maybe we should give a quick introduction of, of each of these different pieces. So Larry, give us the, the overview of what VMware is all about. So VMware is a virtualization company that started in the early uh, 2000s uh, and pretty much pioneered the uh, solution around virtualization or computer virtualization. Uh, it's kind of morphed into not only uh, virtualization for compute, but also storage and, and networking, and then moving into the cloud space and then doing a, a full partnership with AWS and creating VMware Cloud on AWS. So it's been a, a great partnership thus far and it's been really, really successful. And now we're moving into the next phase of that partnership while uh, bringing together, as Jeff just stated, um, VMware AWS and then Outpost to create VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. Wonderful. Okay, Schneider, you, you give us a sense of what VMware on AWS is and, and then also the, the quick overview of what an Outpost is and what it's all about. So um, as Larry mentioned, VMware is one of the widely used hypervisors on premises today. Um, many customers are using it to virtualize their workloads. And so what we have done for these customers to be able to enjoy the benefits of the AWS cloud is to give them the ability to run this vSphere workloads on top of the global AWS infrastructure, hence the name VMware Cloud on AWS. So it is actually a service that allows our customers who run vSphere on premises today to run this vSphere workloads in AWS. It allows them to use what we call the software defined data center on the AWS infrastructure. And that allows them then to enjoy all the benefits that the AWS cloud can offer, such as the scalability, the agility, the global reach, among other things. So in doing all of these for our customers, we've got good adoption of our customers migrating to this cloud and join the same consistency that they enjoy on premises today. But I think, Jeff, you agree with me that not all workloads can move from on-premises to the cloud. There are use cases where customers need to process data locally. There are use cases where customers need to address latency. Because if they put workloads in the cloud, that means that it is far away from the dependencies on-premises. And that causes latency that applications cannot support. So taking this feedback from our customers, that is what led us to build a solution that will bring the software defined data center that we run on the AWS infrastructure closer to our customers. So you can think of it this way as bringing the AWS cloud closer to our customers where they want us to put it. And that is what the outpost is about. So the outpost is a logical entity that allows us to bring 
some of the hardware we run within our own availability zones to wherever the customer tells us to put it. And then once we have that there, the customers are able to run the software defined data center on it, just like they do within the region. And this helps them to address the use cases of latency, local data processing, data residency requirements, as well as data sovereignty requirements that customers might have. Excellent. I just happened to have a picture floating by. This is what the <laughs> outpost looks like. It looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> just happened to have one. Okay. So we, we take these three amazing pieces of tech and we mix them together. Something that I love about this is that essentially it, it sounds like everything that our customers know about VMware and about VMware on AWS all that still applies. So the the time that they've put into training their staff, the time that they've put into building tools and integrating with APIs, um, into just building up operational practices and experience, pretty much all that is 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 going to carry over to this. Is, is that a reasonable thing to think? Yes, Jeff, that is a reasonable thing to think about. And that is the thinking here. As I did mention, some of our customers had made very significant investments into VMware on-premises. Some engineers have spent years certifying around VMware technologies, among other things, right? So for them to move to the cloud, it is not easy for them to simply refactor and just change to learn something new that they are not familiar with. So it is with this in mind that we created this solution to give them the same operational consistency that they have on premises. So anything that is supported on VMware on premises today would run on VMware Cloud on AWS in the region, as well as on an outpost that is closer to them. The APIs are the same. Everything they know about is the same, including the user interface. So the customers do not even see the difference. They just log into the vCenter and then deploy their applications. And with you, Larry, did you find that your customers love this VMware on AWS and on Outposts? Yeah, as I was stating in the beginning, and, and as well as uh, Snyder stated, I mean, the solution has been very successful, uh, bringing that same capability from on prem uh, to the cloud and those same use cases, uh, such as and, and capabilities, such as APIs and tools, and the ability to be able to run the same environment you've been running for years on premises now in the cloud. And now, in the case for Outposts or VMware Cloud AWS Outposts, bringing it back on prem with that same uh, unified uh, user interface as we have today in the cloud. So I think there's a lot of positive uh, sentiment around VMware Cloud AWS, and we hope that there will be the same for VMware Cloud AWS Outposts. Awesome. So I've been hearing this term SDDC. Um, do you want to dive into this, Larry? Explain it for us. What is this? And let's just talk through this. What is, What does it actually mean? Yeah, so I'll actually keep it very simple on that, right? So an SEC is pretty much a data facility of software, right? Which encompasses all the infrastructure, infrastructure components such as networking, storage, and CPU, and security, and is virtualized, delivered as a service. So from a simplicity standpoint, the deployment, uh, operation, and provisioning, and configurations are extracted from the hardware and brought to you as what we call the software-defined data center. Great. I, I think I heard Jeff somewhere say he wishes he had invented that term, but you have it now, Larry. So sorry, Jeff. Um, as we've been chatting, uh, we've been getting all these great questions coming through. We've got a question. I've just popped it on the screen from Tessa. Uh, you, Snyder, or Larry can answer. Uh, I don't know if you, if you can see the question. Does Pekka.io work in Outpost as it works with, v, uh, with VMware? Yeah, so I'll take that. So if that application is so in short, every application that you can install to a virtual machine in a virtualized environment powered by VMware would work on an outpost. It is, I want you to think of it this way, the outpost is just an extension of our availability zone closer to you. And what is in that rack that Jeff showed you is bare metal instances. You can think of them as the rack servers you have on premises and we install vSphere directly onto these bare metal instances. And then 
you deploy your virtual machine and you can install any application that is that supports virtualization onto it so it can run on an outpost it can run on the sddc in the region as well and on premises as long as it is supported for virtualization yeah, so as Lisa mentioned, I love that term software defined data center because I, I when I think of data center, I think of something that takes years to design and permit and build. It's got bulldozers and trucks and racks and cables and all kinds of expense and complexity. But then we say software defined and it's it's some code or it's some some templates or a script and poof, there's your, there's your data center. So I, I, I just love that concept. It's amazing. Um, are we almost close to seeing a demo? Yes. So we can show you some demo, um, especially I'm not actually going to go into a demonstration of how to deploy the SDDC itself. Like I said, it is consistent. It is the same as we do in the region. So there is no change over there. But what I would rather want to demonstrate here is how customers can order for one of this VMware Cloud on AWS outputs that we announced GA on Tuesday, right? And the order process is actually streamlined, right? We've tried to simplify it and customers would be able to make this order from the SDDC console or the software defined data center console that they have. One thing I want to talk about respecting the order here is that proceeding to making the order, you would, as a customer, have communicated with AWS solutions architects in order for them to help you to gather all the requirements needed to place the order. If you are transacting through VMware, VMware solution engineers would also work together with you to gather all the details you need in order to be able to place this order. Because like you're going to see very shortly, a lot is involved in placing the order because we are extending our cloud into an environment where you tell us to put it. So I'm going to show you how the process work. Again, I have ordered a number of these things, a lot of them actually for test and validation. <laughs> I'm not going to send any more orders. People are not <laughs> going to be happy. So I have a simulated order system here where I'm going to simulate how that order is actually going to look for you to see. So how it works is that after you have discussed with your solutions architects or your solutions engineer, you're going to get an email and this email will be for you if you do not have an existing software defined data center account, right? If you have that account already, you can log in and start the order. But if you do not have it, you're going to get an email similar to what you see on my screen. This email is inviting you to create a software defined data center account. So when we click on it, it is going to take you to this page. You would log in and then you would create your username, your address, business profile, and all of this needed information. And then you just click continue and that will take you to the software defined data center. Right. For existing customers, if they log in, this is where it brings them. They can click VMware Cloud on AWS at the top. That is what we have running in the region. But what we care about here is VMware Cloud on AWS output. You can see that you can now expand this and decide to place an order here. Or you can click learn more in order to read about what this solution is and what it does among other things. But if you're ready to place the order, all you have to do is to click order VMware Cloud on AWS output. And it takes you to this console where you need to provide a name for this output. So we put a name here, a fictitious name, and then you click on next. And this is one crucial aspect, right? We do have a prerequisite that all users should have their own AWS account. And when you have this account, we are going to connect that AWS account to your SDDC account. The purpose for this is to allow us to provide support for you. Because remember, the SDDC or the Software Defined Data Center stack is a VMware service. It's a fully managed service. And then that physical hardware is coming from AWS. 
So this account that you are linking here helps us to provide you with support for the hardware when the hardware becomes defective or if there are degraded components within that hardware. So if you have an existing SDDC account, you can see drop down here where you can select the account you want, or you can say create a new account, or you can select the account you want. And if you are new to the service, you would just say create a new account and you would click this cloud formation template. And this cloud formation template will create all the rows needed, and then it would link your account to the SDDC account. When that linking happens, this is what you're going to see. You will see that the linking has been successful. So then the next phase, you are now going to talk about the region that the outpost will connect to. Again, I like to iterate that this outpost solution is an extension of our availability zone. So what that means is that that rack Jeff showed you has connectivity back to the AWS region. It has a parent region. So you need to select the region you wish to connect it here, right? And then if you select the region, then you have to select the availability zone within that region. So these availability zones are cluster of data centers that are connected with high speed fiber, usually with less than two millisecond latency between them. And those are components that lives within the AWS region, which is a geographical area of our cloud systems, right? So once you select the region and your availability zone, you just have to click on next. And this is where you are going to create a site. So this site is where this output is physically going to be located, right? If you do have existing site, you just have to click select existing site and you can select the site from the drop down menu and it would auto populate this section. But if you're new to the system, then say create a new site. You just have to give the site a name and then a description. And in the site notes, you have to put every details about that site in there. For example, if the personnel from AWS would require security clearance to get into the building, you have to put it here. If that building is out of bounds, and it's not available at any point in time, you have to put all that details here. It is critical so that it can help us to offer you a seamless support when needed, right? So you put all that details and the physical address. So now- So, um, Snyder? Yeah. So is this why you say it's very important that you speak to your solution architects first, because they can guide you as to all the information that you need to get together, right? Exactly. So like I'm saying, nobody should feel overwhelmed with this. In fact, that is why we are here in AWS. We are customer obsessed. <laughs> we are here for you, the customers. VMware is also there to support all of you. So if you want to place this order by yourself, the solutions architects can gather all the details needed in an Excel file. You would just watch, look at the file and enter the figures here and submit your order. If you need to share screen for us to guide you through the order process, we are also open to that. So don't feel that you are alone in this process at all. This is just a simulation of how it looks, but we are here to support you to be able to place your first order and beyond. So going forward, this is where you need to select the facility conditions, right? This is telling us that we are bringing an outpost rack to your location. So definitely there are some temperature and humidity requirements that your site has to meet. That is all stated here. And again, your solutions architects will go through that with you. So you just have to select yes if your site is, is compliant to this requirement. In terms of the clearance, this outpost rack is 94 um, high, 94 by 54 by 48 centimeters deep, right? That is the dimensions of it. So you need to have a docking station that can accommodate it if we deliver it to the site. When we deliver it, we also have to wheel it to its final location. So all your ceiling has to accommodate this space, right? So that we don't break your ceilings for you or you know break any ceiling fans or anything right that is why these things are here so you need to also confirm that you have the required clearance here in terms of the rack weight 
you need to also let us know the floor weight right let's say you're trying to put this rack onto the third floor some of these rack can weigh up to two thousand pounds plus so the floor has to be certified to be able to hold that weight you have to let us know what your floor is certified to hold here and in terms of installation equipment the day that we come to install it our aws personnel would need access to internet and wi-fi to connect to it test it and set it up you need to let us know whether you have that accommodation or not in terms of the power draw depending on the number of rack servers you have within that outpost the power draw will be between 5 to 15 kva or kilowatts right so you need to select the right one here and again the solutions architects will be helping you through all of this you don't need to keep this in mind we are here to help you based on that depending on your data center architecture if you're using upstream breakers we support that if you're not using it that's also fine you just need to let us know for the power connection we support single and three phase so whichever phase you have available in your data center or wherever you want us to put that rack just select it here with the corresponding connectors and let us know we also would like to know the architecture of how the power it's like right some architectures have the power going beneath the rack others have it going on top of the rack so again you have to provide this information for us and you also have to let us know whether you have redundant power or not you have to select yes or no and in terms of the network here Again, this is all things that we would go through with you because the outpost is designed to communicate with your on-premises environment. So there has to be connectivity between that rack Jeff showed and your on-premises core switches or routers, right? So these uplink speeds are the speeds available on your on-premises router that will connect to our outpost. So these are the available speeds we have based on what you can support you just have to select that here and this is the number of uplinks there you can also have up to four uplinks or more depending on the speeds that you select so the reasons why we have this uplink here is that we create link aggregations between your device and the outpost network devices and that is how we are able to have the redundant connectivity there so that being said you also have to select your fiber type and then whether it's a multi-mode or a single mode, we support that and the optical standard that comes with it. Then you also have to confirm whether you have network redundancy. What that means is the switches that we are connected to, do you have only one switch or do you have two? You have to let us know here. Once you have this, you click on next. And this is the point where you need to put in the capacity. Today, customers are running different types of hardware from different vendors on premises in this outpost the compute that runs here is i3en.metal it is powered by ec2 instances right and again you would have done the sizing already with your solutions architects or your solutions engineers to be able to know what is required here right the entry level sizing is going to be six nodes for vmware cloud on aws outposts and depending on the size, you can always discuss with us to customize the SKUs for you as well. So you just select the right size here and then click next. Now, here is another critical part, which says output connectivity. So, so can I ask Snyder? Yes. So sorry to cut you. In case my internet cuts me off again and I miss everything else, yes. where would we get to the part where we switch over to, or we hand over to VMware, to Larry's part? Yes, so, so, that, so that is actually quite easy. Is after this, we just have to define whether we want to connect back to the region through direct okay. connect, or we want to do that through the ISP or public internet that the customer has, right? So if you want to use direct connect, you just have to select this option and fill some details here that we would work with your solutions architects to get from you. And then this is where you have to select the payment terms. Now I need to say that these are fictitious numbers that we just put here. This is never the price of the solution. It's just something fictitious. But at this point, you are ready to review everything that you've put in the order. 
and you just have to acknowledge and submit the order once the order is submitted you're going to receive an email from vmware with some specific steps to take and i'm going to let larry cover those steps to take before we bring the rack for installation great thank you for going through that uh process snyder it can't seem like a bunch of information but that's not was stating <laughs> Um, we will fully be white gloving this, this solution. So it doesn't matter if we're coming through AWS or coming through VMware. Uh, we will have a team of people that uh, get you all the required information and help you to uh, enter this information regarding the console. So in terms of after submitting your order, you will receive that additional information associated with the order stating that it's been completed and some of the next steps. Uh, after that, after the order has been submitted, you can come back to the VMware Cloud console and look under order history here. Uh, as you see it here, it's shown as a more completed step as Snyder was saying, we, we've got plenty of orders and we don't wanna kind of go through that full process. Uh, so this is more of a simulated environment. So we will start, it, start out with the reviewing order piece where then that uh, check would be uh, checked and the rest would not. So in terms of reviewing order, that's just basically uh, the overall VMware and AWS team going through your order and making sure that all that information is correct. But at that same time, uh, moving on to the validation and order requirements, uh, AWS is going to be doing a site survey. As a part of the email that was sent, there will be another email that gets sent from AWS regarding the uh, logical networking requirements. And so those requirements are associated with things such as the subnets, uh, the ASN information regarding BGP, and uh, some of the security information regarding the solution. So in terms of the site survey, you need to make sure AWS has this information back uh, before they actually can, can come in and complete the site survey, AWS will reach out to you and schedule the site survey for a specific date that they can come in and do that. Uh, and then AWS will come out and do the site survey. And then during the site survey, they're going to be validating all of that information that was provided, uh, some of the stuff that, that Snyder was going through, such so the power facility, uh, cooling, the uh, floor space, the uh, um, networking as well. And they'll be also doing the network validation to, commu to show communication uh, back to the AWS region. After that is completed, you'll see the second check there was uh, validating the requirements and moving order to the uh, processing order or the build phase. So in terms of building the rack, that will be based on what you order and your, the configuration that you've ordered. And then once the rack has been built, uh, you'll have a check there for processing order. And then in terms of install, that's associated with the install date. AWS will actually reach out to you and schedule your, your uh, install date for your VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost and then they'll come in to install. And so in the case of doing the install, after you receive your rack, AWS is actually gonna just drop that rack into place in terms of where you have it in a specific location uh, and plug into power and uh, networking. And so after that, what needs to happen is that there needs to be an additional provisioning time period, which typically takes around five days. And so that'll be done remote by AWS. After that is completed, uh, internally, VMware will be notified that the rack is ready to go, and then you'll see a check here for order fulfilled. You will also receive an email uh, stating that you are able to deploy your SDC, and then in the VMware Cloud Console, you'll see an alert as well. You can pop back in here and then actually do deploy. Uh, one additional thing is that in terms of this, this summary page, you'll also have the summary information regarding your order. So associated uh, subscription information, order ID, account ID associated with your AWS account, and then the uh, associated region availability zone, the outpost site information, the host count and instance site that you'll be using, if you chose to go with private connectivity or not, and then your specific term. But coming back into the cloud console to do your deployment, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost looks very, very similar to the deployment model for VMware Cloud on AWS. So in terms of the first step, it will be uh, naming your SDBC associated with the Outpost. Uh, as we see here, we, we already have uh, the information associated with the Outpost and the Outpost ID. Uh, and if you already had additional Outpost, there would actually be a drop down for you to select the Outpost to what you want to deploy on. So the first step then be naming uh, your Outpost uh, for deployment, your outpost SDBC, and then clicking next. All right, and then getting to the SDC host configuration, you'll be selecting the amount of hosts that you selected during your order for deployment. And then that will show the total host capacity and total capacity of the what's to be deployed. And then you'll click next. 
In terms of the VPC and subnet, this is associated as the same as again, we're calling AWS, connecting the customer account and selecting the VPC and subnet for the purpose of deployment or, or ENI uh, connection. Uh, we'll be using the connection to AWS that you actually did in the initial order process, and then you'll select the associated VPC and subnet. Then we'll click next. And then you'll have the management subnet. Again, this information that's associated with this uh, management subnet will be given to you or worked out with you uh, with the solutions architect or solution engineer uh, to better understand what was the plan from a network perspective for the deployment. This management subnet is associated with the VMC on AWS outpost deployment and management of that. Uh, there's a minimum requirement of a slash 23. In this case, we have a slash 16. And we'll click next. And it goes over the deployment summary. So it'll show all the information regarding the outpost, the outpost name, the SEC plan name, the outpost ID, the associated VPC and subnet, and the management subnet, and then the capacity of, of plan deployment. Last, you go ahead and click the acknowledgement information, uh, showing that the charges or the subscription then will be activated as associated with your first deployment, and that the subscription period is based on that first time deployment of the SDC. And then you will go ahead and click deploy. And after you deploy, uh, it looks the same as VMware Cloud on AWS, where we will be uh, automating the deployment on your VMware Cloud on AWS outpost uh, with the estimated time frame. You can check back, and you should be able to see that your outpost has been or your SDC has been deployed on your outpost, and you're ready to go. You know, That's something it. that just really blows my mind here is that so many very powerful complex pieces of hardware and software and communication and billing and sign up and registration it's all so nicely packaged up here and taking it from actually to me like advanced rocket science to regular folks can go through all of this and get the benefits of, of all this awesome technology yeah, we really do think that it, it will be positive. It's definitely a lot of information and there's definitely a lot of man hours put into place by the VMware and AWS team uh, to go to bring this to you guys for that uh, for solution. That's amazing. Um, what I'm loving is is a continued collaboration uh, between AWS and, and VMware and uh, just the different options that this continues to bring for our customers and VMware's customers. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Snyder and Larry, for this. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.